Super League single-seater racing car. It's a machine like no other, supplied to all competing clubs by the league itself. And here we are looking at Liverpool's version of the car. It's a carbon composite chassis built in the United States by Elan Motorsport Technologies, the Panos chassis housing. In the back of it, a British-built V12 engine, specifically for Formula Super League. V12, as I say, and 750 brake horsepower. It's a bit of a monster. And the drivers and engineers have little subtle ways of changing the car to make it suit their driving styles and to get the best out of it. One of the most critical areas, however, are aerodynamics. And this rear wing shows you that there is a lot of downforce that can be created here, and adjusting to get it just right is crucial. Angling this wing a little more, a little less, will change the handling of the car, because the more rear wing we have, the more downforce we have pressing the car down onto the road, but also the more drag we create. It's blocking the air, so slowing the car in a straight line. So it's all about trying to get the compromise between downforce and drag. You can change the springs, you can change the ride height of the car, you can also change the setup of the front anti-roll bar. In fact, the driver can change the stiffness of that from within the cockpit. But as you can see, the teams don't want us looking too closely because it's these tiny, subtle changes that can make the difference between a car on pole position or at the back of the grid. These Michelin tyres are the same for everybody. The front slick here, the rear slick, that little bit bigger. But they respond to tiny changes in pressure to get the very best out of the car. So one of the elements we've been talking about, suspension, aerodynamics and tyres. If you get all these tiny changes right, it can make all the difference to your competitiveness. <laughs>